Hello and welcome to me making Miku's dress. First, I started with drafting the pattern and I really didn't have any knowledge on how dresses were patterned at all, so I made a lot of drafts. And I got it onto the dress form and the petticoat and I, from there, freehanded a lot of it and just kept adjusting the pattern. So once I was happy with the shape that I got, I moved on to making the petticoat more fluffier, as you can see, and look, all that floof. So then I cut out my pattern on the actual fabric I was going to use, and I used interfacing to make it more stiff. And next were the ruffles. So I gathered the stitches, and then I made two strips of ruffles, and I started pinning them down, and then I started clipping them to the actual fabric, and I sewed it all together. And finally, we have this skirt. Thanks for watching, and follow me if you want to see how the rest of the dress is made. Bye! Okay, here is part two of making Miku's dress. I have not felt this much stress in so long. The colors of the blouse that I got and my dress were incorrect. So I took apart the blouse that I had and I made a pattern out of it so I could cut it out of the fabric I used for the dress. And then I altered it and pleated it and made it look nice and more accurate to the actual thing. And here it is, ta-da! And then I put it on and next I put Velcro on it too so I didn't have to have buttonholes. And then I put this ribbon on it and then I was doing the ruffles, measuring it out, putting it all together, gathering. This took me forever. And then I ironed it down, as you can see, sewed it onto the actual blouse, and then I realized that I hated the color of it. So then I changed it to a different ribbon, and this time I put a wire inside too to hold the shape, and here you can see the two different colors. And then I put that one on instead, and then I put buttons on top. They're just for looks, they don't actually work. Anyways, here it is, ta-da! It looks pretty, right? It took me forever, I almost cried, and okay, follow me and go to part three, bye! Okay, so you see how there's like notes around this dress? It actually goes all the way to the back. And I thought something that would be really cool is um, if I make those notes, like the actual notes from World Is Mine, like the melody of World Is Mine. So, cause I'm singing that song for Otakon's Masquerade on Saturday. So I'll be using this, I'll be wearing this dress and I think it'd be really cool. So um, that was just, a little thing that I thought to myself, like a hidden Easter egg that I can put in to my cosplay and maybe impress the judges with that. So, exciting! This is part three of my Miku dress. If you haven't seen my last video, I wanted to put the song of World Is Mine on my dress because I would be singing it for Otakon's Masquerade. I started by notating the melody in a notation software to see what rhythms would work best and an easier reference of where I should put the strawberries. Then I started drawing a staff out onto the dress and painted it with red fabric paint. Next, I started penciling in the notes onto the staff. I used green fabric paint for the stems and then I got all these embroidered patches from AliExpress and I put these strawberry patches on as the notes um, then later I cut the leaves from an embroidered lace thing that I got off of Amazon and painted them the correct shade of green. These are the little flags to represent the eighth notes. Rhythms are indeed incorrect as I have stated in my previous video, but I figured I'd say it again because I still got comments in all languages saying it was wrong. I tried my best to make the notes limited to eighth and quarters because that was in the original design. Anyways, here it is. Part four is coming out really soon because I did a lot of it at the same time as part three. Stay tuned! Here is part four of my Miku dress. I started by patterning out the corset with a cheap muslin fabric. I then started pinning down the pattern onto my dress to see where the bottom ruffles would go. I drew a line and pinned the ruffles to the line to get ready to attach. Next, I cut out the corset on the fabric that I was using that was custom colored by Joann's. I ironed it down and then it was time to start decorating. I used white ribbon and lace and glued it down to the corset. Next, I started drafting the ripples on the side of her dress. I quickly sewed that and pinned it down as it was fairly easy. Finally, I started drafting the cloud checkered thing on the side of her dress out of bed sheets. The fabric that I used was also custom colored by Joann's. I ironed it down and painted what looked like a ribbon along the edge because sewing an actual ribbon in a curve would have been quite difficult. I learned how to make these really cute little bows out of ribbon that I glued down to the cloud. Oh my god, it's literally so cute. I attached the blouse to the dress and added the zipper. I can finally wear it like a normal dress now. Still some shaping stuff I would like to fix. I tried using a wire, but it ended up looking like a beaver slash ironing board, so that immediately got removed, LMAO. If you want to see that though, you can find it in my Instagram highlights. Okay, get ready for part five. Bye! 
Welcome to part 5 of the Miku dress. In this part, I altered the thigh highs and made my sleeves. I started by making some ruffles from an elastic band that I had then sewed onto the top of the thigh highs. Miku has a red ribbon that weaves through the ruffles, but I was very lazy, so I decided to just glue pieces of ribbon on it. Then I made this cute bow from more ribbon and wire and glued that onto the left thigh high. The sleeves were so difficult for me. As you can see, I made like six prototypes only to full send one and then redo it because I still hated it. I ended up just using a singular sheet of fabric for the sleeve and putting some interfacing in it to make it a puff. I used a gold fabric marker to make the design of the sleeves and I sewed the cuff, elastic, and ruffles to it. I put some buttons on and used the same technique for the ribbon as I did with the thigh highs to get the same effect. I have less than a week left before the con and I'm really losing time, so unfortunately I had to cut the fork out for Otakon. I will most likely bring this cause again to Anime NYC, so I'll have time to make it before then. The wig will be in the next video, so stay tuned! It's day zero of Otakon, and here is part six of the Miku dress. I started with a base art wig, and I followed Kim Patsu Cosplay's high ponytail tutorial for the pigtails on this wig. So I won't go into full detail on how I made it because she already has videos out there. I highly recommend them. Then I started gluing hair onto the pigtails to give the effect that the hair is pulling into the pigtails. I did a zigzag pattern on the back to hide the cap. Next, I prototyped the tails, and this was huge. I cut the pattern out of foam, and I painted it all the same color of the wig. I glued the wefts down to the foam. By the way, I got like four of these long wefts from Arda on both sides and then I glued it to the PVC pipes. To be honest, I probably should have done all the gluing after the shape was there, but I was dumb, so the inside doesn't look too good. I glued more wefts for length and started gluing flowers onto the wig. The bows were then made and glued onto the bottom of the pigtails. I made some ruffles and accessories for the wig, but I'm running out of time, so here's the wig in my hotel bathroom of the con. LMFAO, I'm still working on this outfit and I have one day left, so uh, anyways, final part coming out soon. Bye! Here's the final part of Miku. Sorry it's really loud. I'm at the con right now, so um, here we go. I made the large bows of the dress on the final part. I started making the big part of the pink bow in the back by making two regular bows and then gluing them together. I made a pattern of the tails and cut them out onto two types of fabric. The outside was satin and the inside was a regular cotton. I also put a wire in it to give some shape to the ruffling of the tails. I glued some lace to it and attached the bow to a stiffer wire to allow me to detach the bow from my corset. Next, I worked on the red bow. I added some lace and it was finished. For the front ribbon, I used two ribbons, one red and one white. Here we go. Um, I added pearls and some embroidered flowers and leaves. I didn't record the process of the blouse bow, but it was very similar to the others. I velcroed it onto the dress, and so here is the final dress. I will have more photos of her coming out on my Instagram, and I'll keep working on her fork for NYC. I hope to see you all at the masquerade, and thank you so much for following me on this journey. I learned a lot, and I'm, the support was super, super awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, bye! <laughs> Here's an extra addition to the Strawberry Miku cosplay. I made the fork for Anime NYC and here's how I made it. I started by 3D modeling the fork on Blender and then 3D printed it in sections. The middle of the fork was made from a 1 inch PVC pipe. I glued the 3D printed pieces together and then I sanded and filled in the gaps with quick seal. My arms were so sore after this process. And then I realized it did not like the proportions of the first attempt of the fork, so I remade it, and you can see that on the right. And then I measured the proportions of the middle of the fork from the Nendoroid model, and I started putting together the entire fork. I primed the fork and used gold spray paint for all of it. Then I did a trial run of using resin to make the jam part of the strawberry. I mixed the resin with mica powder, glitter, and paint to color it. I actually messed up multiple times on this part, so the resin was still curing during the con. It was also not a flat, glossy top, but it added to the jam look. Finally, I made the ribbon and put it on the fork in the morning of the con. Thank you all for following this journey. I have finally completed the entire cosplay, and I'm excited to work on new projects in the future, so if you want to see those, follow me for more. Bye!